From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a huge night as the President of the United States addresses the American public and the looming recession. His comments will be analyzed in tonight's broadcast from the shores of Santa Monica, California, in America's most watched show for financial news in prime time. It's evening to LA. The President says, a recession is not inevitable, and he says we can prevent it. Is he right? Well, we could get through it with a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. And in tonight's recording, we're going to get those forced stimulus checks in every U.S. state. They've landed. They've landed since the month of March, and we're going to go over Biden's comments in tonight's breaking news report. Plus, the other break news is that a benefits check will be going up for you if you're on SSI, SSDI, VA, and more. Stay with me over this broadcast. We'll go over that big news. But the problematic news is the downfall of this economy. Auto sales slumping, housing sales slumping, and a storm out to sea. That storm out to sea is recession. Gas prices were likely to go higher. And how much higher? In tonight's recording, I'll explain to you that you could see $10 a gallon, and that is just the start. Big problems, and the problems of the gasoline may send this economy in recession. The price of goods are going to go up, consumer confidence is going to go down, and then gas is not going to go lower, inflation is going to go, not going to go lower. That is why you have to get that forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. And tonight, I'm going to show you how to. Step one, go under this video right tonight and become a member. Hit that join button and become a Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP. And in tonight's recording, we got a lot of money to go over. The Federal Reserve's head, Jay Powell, spoke minutes ago today. Yes, again today. He just keeps on talking. And did he make any sense? All the latest comments from Jay Powell. Then we'll be analyzing what's going on with this recession. Are we in it right now? Or is it coming? Or is it inevitable? Or is it not inevitable? As, Jay, as Joe Biden said minutes ago. The housing market crash. How big will it be? And will inflation go higher or will it go lower? What about unemployment? And is that going to really hit us dramatically? From the shores of Santa Monica, California, you can't wait to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state because you have a lead time. You have a pre-warning of three months before the downward spiral of this economy really is pronounced by September. And tonight you're going to get it. It's evenings, L.A., and it starts right now. And good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful night. It is June 17, 2022 from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Good evening. I hope you're having a beautiful week and a good weekend will be upon us. I'll be with you all weekend long with the breaking news. So tune in all weekend long with new shows and new breaking news with your financial developing details. As we start a new week, the question at issue is, are we going in recession or are we not? And those comments were asked of the President of the United States just minutes ago in a new interview, and his comments came out. Is he on point? Is he not? Is he missing the, the issue at hand? Or is he really getting a little bit peeved at the whole situation overall? I'm going to start with Joe Biden's comments on this recession looming starting right now. It's the major story as we start a big night and laying this recording, we're going to get those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. Because guess what? <laughs> You're going in a recession. Back in the month of February, the landscape of financial news broadcasting was me and everyone else. Why? Because I was the only financial broadcaster in American landscape today. In February, saying we're going to recession in 2023 for two years. In fact, there was no U.S. bank saying that at all. The first one to announce it was Deutsche Bank in April. At the time when I said we're going to recession back in February, the, I told the viewers of Seattle to get prepared, get their money lined up, get their money prepared, and their situation financially stable. And no one else was talking about recession. Let's understand what's happening tonight. It's the number one story in everyone's mouth, recession. And it was the question asked to the President of the United States in a new interview today. I'm going to go over his comments, I'm going to go over the questions, and I'm going to go over the analysis starting right now. And later in this video, I'm going to get you checks, lots of them, because you're going to need them 
because we are going to recession. This is LA, and three things I do in every video and every night on Evens LA. I go over where the economy is today, I go over where we're going, and I get you checks later in this video. The President of the United States was interviewed in the Oval Office minutes ago today, June 17th, 2022, by Associated Press. And they were asked a series, he was asked a series of questions. First off, he was asked, is a recession inevitable? Meaning, are we definitely going to recession? His response was, first of all, a recession is not inevitable. Let's stop right there at that response. Is a recession inevitable or not inevitable? Here's the takeaway. It's pretty black and white. If you do not solve the situation of gasoline, you're going to recession. If you do solve the situation of gasoline, you may not go to recession. What's the situation of gasoline? 3.5 million barrels of gasoline is missing from the Western Allies every single day. The Western Allies are the United States, Germany, France, Italy, and all the rest of them. The 3.5 million barrels, why are they missing? Because of the embargo of Russian oil, and they decreased production by OPEC+. Plus. We have missing oil 3.5 million barrels per day. And if you don't have that oil replaced, then you have a shortage. If you have a shortage, the gasoline prices go up. So where do you fi find 3.5 million barrels of gasoline per day? Not in the United States, because we do not have it. We don't have it in the soil. And even if we increase production, coming up later in this recording, I'll go over more about this in detail, you're not going to get 3.5 million barrels. So if you solve the situation of gasoline, get the replace missing oil, then you could prevent a recession. If you don't, a recession is inevitable. So I do not agree with the President of the United States. Recession is inevitable if you do not solve the situation gasoline. How you solve the situation on gasoline is coming up later in tonight's recording. He then says, secondly, the United States were in a stronger position than any other nation in the world to overcome this inflation. True or false? True. We are in a better situation because we have more money. We can buy more oil. <laughs> we can buy more oil and we can negotiate an oil deal better than any other country because we're a much more, liquid, uh, much more liquid country than other countries. But are we in a better position to battle inflation? Uh, yes, he is correct. Because the inflation currently in the United States is tracking about 8.5%. We learned that last Friday. And that CPI read released last Friday. It's not good. It's not good, 85 But it's not as bad as the Western allies. Italy is seeing, temp, is seeing massive inflation, higher than us. And they're going higher. And even over in England, which is a very similar economy, they are now projecting 10% inflation by December. So he is correct. We are not going to see the type of inflation you see overseas. But let's go to the second part of his comments. When asked more about recession, this is what Joe Biden said. This is Joe Biden speaking. It's not, if it if it's my fault, why is it the case that every other major industrial country in the world, that inflation is higher? You ask yourself that. I'm not being a wise guy. Uh, is this the president? Is this Joe Biden speaking? You notice the tone by Joe Biden has really changed the last seven days. Last week, when on the tower mark, in Santa Monica's Municipal Airport, the President of the United States was asked about the situation on gasoline. And he had a very irate comment saying that the, the oil executives are making rampant mon monthly uh, earnings numbers. He says, ask them that question. Tonight, he says, I'm not being a wise guy. It seems as though the questions about the economy are getting to the President of the United States. But then he pivots. He says, be confident, because I'm confident. We're in a better position than any country in the world uh, to own the second quarter of the 21st century. That's not a hyperbole. It's a fact. Is it hyperbole? Well, it is a hyperbole if you don't get the missing gasoline. The analysis tonight is very simple. Let me explain to you, and you've learned this as a very smart view of this channel over the last few months. This economy has a series of facts that one causes the other fact to occur. Let me go over the analysis. Very simple, starting right now. If you have a gasoline shortage, the gasoline goes higher. If the gasoline goes higher, then the CPI, the Consumer Price Index number, which is an inflationary number, goes higher. Then inflation is perceived as higher than the month before. If inflation is higher, then Jay Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, comes in and says, I'm raising interest rates because inflation is not peaked. It's actually going higher. I need it to go lower. As Jay Powell raises interest rates, 
things cost more, economies slow down, and as you slow down too abruptly, you go in a recession. It's a very simple equation. It's black and white. And that's what millions of Americans now understand. And it all starts with the lack of solution with the gasoline. Laying this according, I'll go over the notion of why the President of the United States has not gotten that solution of gasoline lined up and what could be the result of it. Another breaking news report that came in today is the comments from Jay Bao. <laughs> Your comedy hour. Yeah, he's appearing in stand-up comedies across the country. And what is he saying? I'm getting inflation down to 2%. Laugh. Run the laugh track. I'm getting inflation down to 2%. Not happening, Jay Powell. And who says it? I said it back in February. Since then, the Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, which is a nonprofit organization, a part of the federal government, says it's not going to happen. Also not saying it's not going to happen is the Department of Labor. Also saying it's not going to happen is <laughs> Wall Street. If Wall Street doesn't believe you, who's going to believe you? Jay Powell, in a series of new comments today, yes, this is again him speaking again. He's speaking every single day this week is that he's getting inflation down to his price target of 2%. Why is that not going to happen again? Because inflation is dependent upon gasoline. If a gasoline is going higher, then inflation goes higher, and j Powell has nothing in his toolbox to get down the price of gasoline at all in the United States economy. And that is what's important to understand. The stock market crash of 2022 will continue. And the stock market crash of 2022 was not as pronounced today as it was yesterday, for Thursday, it was down 800 points. Of the day before, it went up a little bit more. Then last week, it was down 600 and 600 and 600. The stock market crash of 2022 is just underway. What you need to know is that we're in a bear market. Bear market means the market will be down 26%. But when you go into a recession, you go down 47.8%. So please understand that that recession will start next year. That means stocks will continue to go down this year, will continue to go down next year. This is not a dip. This is a massive crash. It's a stock market crash of 2022. The housing market crash of 2022 is fully underway. And the consumer confidence for both the builders, the consumers, the realtors is not there anymore. Later this recording, we'll go over why that housing market started with housing sales down a week ago, two weeks ago, and continued with other problems like the mortgage rates. Auto sales down 24% year to date, and they're doing the same thing wrong that the housing industry is doing. We'll be analyzing that later in this recording, but here's what you need to know, is that there's a storm out to sea. What do I do in every recording? I do three things. I tell you the latest economic data today, where this economy is going, and also get you checks. And boy, have I been spot on. There is three phases to this economy we are going through. Let's explain them right now. As you sit here for June 17, 2022, you're in a downward spiral of this economy in phase one. It's a very much like a whiplash moment where things were good and then suddenly they're bad just 10 seconds later. Times were pretty good in this economy, maybe, maybe in January for you, maybe in February they're pretty good. Maybe in March you started to wonder, wait a second, doesn't look so good anymore. Well, understand that this, today, for June 17, 2022, is not the recession. This is not as bad as it's going to get. But yet a lot of consumers, in fact, in a new poll released two weeks, two Fridays ago, said this is the recession. Ouch. They believe this is as bad as it's going to get? No, it's not. In September of 2022, I'm predicting that phase two will start, and that it will look like day one of the lockdown of March of 2020. Imagine how bad that was. When that lockdown was announced, you had no pre-warning. So you ran left and right to find stimulus. You're unemployed. You look for PUA, PEUC, FPUC. You're a small business owner. You look for EIDL grant or EIDL loan. You look for lots of stimulus very quickly because you never had a pre-warning. It's different this time around because you're watching this channel because you're part of the Purple Power community. The pre-warning is this video tonight. It's the videos of this channel since February. But tonight, you have a three-month pre-warning. By September, it's going to be a lot worse. And by September, you will have already prepared yourself and your family and your household because you will have listened to this video back in June before September hits 
and you have gotten that four symbol check in every U.S. state. Go it over in Landon's video. We're going to go over those four symbols checks in every U.S. state. You're not going to wait to the implosion of this economy in September. You're going to get that four symbols check in every U.S. state. It's coming up later in this video. Step one is subscribe. Step two is become a member. And step three, stay the second half of this video because you need those four symbols checks in every U.S. state. Why can you not wait? Let me tell you what's going to happen in the next 30 days. Let me just tell you what's going to happen in the next 90 days. In the next 90 days, the price of goods are going to go higher. Inflation is not going to be curbed by J. Powell raising interest rates. And yet, your milk, your eggs, your consumer products are going to go higher. You're going to see the recessionary winds pick up. I mean, if you've been watching this channel since February, when I was the only one using the word recession, now it's front page news. The recessionary winds are certainly upon us. Mortgage rates are going to go higher. Currently, five and a half. I believe it's going to go 6%. They rose because interest rates were risen by J. Powell. Consumer confidence is going to erode in the next 90 days. It's already happened. It's already happened. The data that came in the last 24 hours on June 16th was Destination Wealth Manager Michael Hoshana says, the problem we have here is that are we going to tip the economy when the consumer is already starting to pull back? Yes, the consumer is pulling back on spending. The consumer is pulling back on spending like you've never seen, in some cases correctly. Tonight we learned that millennials correctly are shutting off major purchases left and right. That's a correct approach to the situation. They are no longer buying cars, homes, or major purchases because interest rates are 44% higher. They cannot afford it. Meantime, they may not have the income because a lot of people are being laid off. We'll be going over those layoffs in just a second. Do not depend on the next 90 days the gas is going to go lower. I'm predicting it's going to $10 a gallon later in this video. Do not expect inflation to go lower. I expect it still to stay high. And do not expect fast action from Congress. That's why you have to get a forced stimulus check in every U.S. state. That's between now and September. What's also going to happen between now and September? What's also going to happen is gasoline prices are going to go higher. And supply chain will continue. And with that, what's also going to happen is labor is going to get worse. The most evident part of the downward spiral of this economy over the next 90 days will be the situation changing so dramatically on the labor front. What's going to happen on the labor front? Layoffs. Layoffs. Hiring freezes. As businesses say, I fear that there's a recession around the corner. I need to prepare my business. And they're going to prepare their business by preparing for a recession and laying off people. And that's what's already happening tonight. It started over a month ago when we saw the corporate earnings coming in for Q1 2022. And Walmart announced there's too many employees on the floor. Excuse me? Too many employees. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means there's too many of you. Uh, does that mean you're laying me off? That basically is that type of language. That's the pre-warning of language that I'm going to lay you off. There's too many of you around. Get ready. I don't want all of you here. But we didn't hear the corporate layoffs at the time. The number one financial news channel in America was running that, hey, <laughs> no one's getting laid off. That was their story. Tonight, their story is if you're laid off, what do you do? The situation changed very dramatically because over the Memorial Day weekend, Tesla was the first major U.S. corporation to announce 10% of its workforce laid off. 10% is not the norm. We have Coinbase announcing 18% layoffs this week. They said 18% layoff, hiring freezes, meaning you cannot come and apply for a job. And they cited the recession as the reason they're doing it. So did Tesla. What is going to happen between now and September for non-viewers of this channel? I fully believe that they are going to get laid off, potentially, and then they're going to think that there's an employee next door that's going to hire them. They're going to be able to ask for a salary raise and even a hiring bonus. Uh, not going to happen. That employer may not even be there. The number of jobless claims released Thursday, yesterday, came exactly on the money as I had predicted a week earlier. If you've been watching this channel for the last week, I said the new jobless claims this coming Thursday. I'm predicting 230,000 new jobless claims. It came in at 229,000. These are first-time jobless claims, and the vast majority of them are people who work at small businesses where the business went under. The number of new jobless claims, the number of continued jobless claims are one and a half million approximately. This is not good. 
this is no bueno because before the pandemic in March of 2020, the number of jobless claims was about 200,000. So we're above that than when the pandemic had hit, shot to 1 million. This is what I deeply fear. I deeply fear that Americans who have jobs think they have job security when they don't, think that if they're laid off, there's a job next door. They, it is not potentially there anymore. And think that when that job, when they're laid off, they can just ask for a salary raise next door. Not happening. Moreover, I'm deeply worried that Americans believe because of lack of broadcast reporting that FPUC is still around, that additional $600 on top of your weekly unemployment benefits, it is not. That PUA is around for unemployment benefits for independent contractors, it is not. And that PEUC is still around, those are seven weeks of unemployment benefits, it's not around anymore. I'm also worried about small business owners who may think that EIDL grant is around and EIDL loan. It is not, and that is not as well. That is why you got to get the force to must check in every U.S. state. You're watching this channel tonight. You're preparing your household and you have a pre-warning. It's the really great situation that as a member of this channel where I care about your financial livelihood, you care about your financial livelihood, you are being preparing for your family and what's coming in 90 days from now. What's going to happen between now and 90 days is that people who have information are going to be prepared for this economy's downturn and people who don't have information or don't want information is not are not going to be prepared those comments came in yesterday from a big well-regarded financial analyst and he basically said the silly times are going to leave us very quickly those silly times are comments from alliance chief investment advisor mohammed al-ararian now let me explain what's going on the reason why we had a really long bull market where everyone was doing really well for many different situ situations was because the U.S. central bank and other foreign central banks were supporting this econ their economies artificially so that the mortgage, so that the interest rates were at zero, zero. Imagine how many years the zero interest rates were in this U.S. economy. Well, that's no longer the case. And yesterday, some financial analysts called it interest rate independence day you're now going to see interest rates surge out of control in many countries because they're no longer supporting it orarian says the following it's about time we exit this artificial world of predictable mass liquidity where everybody should get used to zero interest rates through liquidity injections mm -hmm. where we do silly things whether it's investing in parts of the market we should not be investing in or investing in the economy in ways that don't make sense we're all exiting that regime and it's going to be bumpy that exiting the regime is underway because zero interest rates are gone and they're gone not only in the United States but overseas. Foreign banks, foreign economies that are co which are coexisting with us, which have a very symbiotic relation with us, are out of control tonight. Whether it's Italy, whether it's Germany, whether it's Switzerland, they're all having problems. In the mechanics of England, England's a very symbiotic uh, economy to ours. They're looking at 10% inflation by December. And that is even with five interest rate spikes. How about the interest rate yields in the United States? Let me tell you what you need to do right now, right tonight, and then I'll tell you why. You need to get rid of any instrument in your household that is dependent upon a flexible interest rate item. Switch it to a fixed or get rid of it by paying it off. If you have credit card debt, pay it off. If you have a car loan, get rid of it. If you have any type of flexible mortgage rate, fix, switch it to fix. Why? Because Jay Powell this last week at that FOMC meeting of June 2022, actually not last week, this week, I should say, had a three-quarter basis point increase. That is just the start. What is Jay Powell going to do? My analysis, which is co-subscribed by one of the major banks, I believe it's JP Morgan Chase, is going to do, in my prediction, three quarters of a basis point in the July meeting, then half in September, they're off in August, half in October, and then quarter in November. Imagine how much of an interest rate spike that's going to be. It's going to drive your interest rates to the roof and you cannot afford it. You need to get rid of all those items. Here are your yields tonight. The yields tonight are out of control. The 10-year Treasury note is at 3.404. The 30-year bond is at 3.43. The two-year bond is at 3.32. And even the Swiss bank, which never has ever touched rates for decades, 
is raising rates for the first time in 15 years. Yes. A new report says that 50% that 50 of, of seniors polled were increasing their credit card debt and also dipping into their consumer savings. They're not my viewers. They are sure not my viewers. This is not what you do. You do not want to be doing either of those situations because the economy is getting worse. Let me tell you how bad January 2023 will be. That will be the recession. In January 2023, it's going to be worse than the lockdown of the pandemic. It's going to be the worst situation you've seen since the start of this economy. What will happen in January 2023? In January 2023, all the industries that have worked on a bubble-like environment right now in June of this year will go under. They're going to bust like you've never seen them bust before. What's going to happen? Well, unemployment will surge uncontrollably, and there will be layoffs, there'll be hiring freezes, and those employees that thought there was job security are going to have a rude awakening. Gas prices, I believe, will go to $10 a gallon. I'll explain to you why later in this recording. The housing market is going to go bust. It may go bust by the end of this year. Already down 17% year to date. Let me explain why housing auto and also travel and leisure are all going to go bust in a major way. These three industries are all doing the same thing at the same time. And boy, it shows you they're engaging in corporate silliness. There's that word again. What are they doing? Their cost to operate their businesses are going up. And instead of giving themselves less profit, they're trying to keep the same profit and raise the price of the item for you and you're not buying. It's happening in housing, auto, travel and leisure, aerospace and more. And we're going to go over all that starting right now. First of all, the housing market crash of 2022. It's going to be very pronounced because the home builders did not pivot. What do they do? They did not absorb the higher material costs or labor costs. They just raised the price of the homes thinking you would still buy and you did not. The housing sales were down 17%. Now consumer confidence is not there. Builder confidence is not there. And guess what is there? Higher mortgage rates. Out of control mortgage rates. At the time of tonight's recording, the mortgage rates have moved from 3% to 5.5%. Guess how high they're going to go? They could go to 6 and 7% if J-Pow keeps on doing these interest rate spikes, as I predict. How many homes are going to be sold at 7% mortgage rate? None. How many are going to be bought at a 5% mortgage rate? Very few. That's why millennials are correctly not buying homes because they cannot afford the homes. And this is what's going to happen. People who bought homes last year thinking they're going to turn up and flip them. And then thought, okay, the, the material costs are going up. I'll just raise the price of the home. Then can't sell them. They're going to have to slash the price. If they don't slash the price and get out of that home fast enough, they're going to lose the home in foreclosure. What about the buyers? They're not going to buy. Over to auto. The same situation tonight. As Cessna announces, this week it's raising the price of his cars by $6,000. Are you going to buy that Tesla? Of course you're not. You're not going to spend $6,000 more for the car than was available just a few weeks earlier. And why is that important? Because when you go to buy the Tesla, you're not going to be able to afford the Tesla because the car loan payments are so much higher. Auto sales were already down 24% before Tesla made that announcement. That's year to date. Imagine how much more they're going to be down. The auto industry is not pivoting. Auto industry is not pivoting. Who else is not pivoting along with auto? Travel, leisure, hospitality, and more. First, travel and leisure. This week, the cruise stocks took a major fall dramatically. Last week, the airline stocks took a major fall as well. This week, the bookings for travel was down 3%. What's going on? Same narrative, same analysis. The travel and leisure understood that the, that the fuel cost, the jet fuel has gone up. So rather than give themselves less profits, they decide to give them themselves the same profit and raise the price of the airfare nearly $500 domestic U.S. round-trip average airfare. Are you going to pay that? Of course you're not. You may have done that one time to celebrate coming off of lockdown, but other than that, you're not going to keep on doing that. You can't afford it. And that's why the airlines are going to go under. That's why the hotels are going to go under. They're sticking you with higher material costs. That is why 
the cruise industry is plummeting to their worst numbers since the pandemic. And we're not even the recession yet. They're going to lay you off. They're not going to hire you if you're an employee in the cruise industry. What about hospitality and leisure? Bars, restaurants, same thing. Increase in costs and they're increasing the price of the meal, the drink on the table, and you're not paying for it. And this is the type of bubble-like environment where a bus happens, and it happens very abruptly. That is why you cannot wait. You have the wonders and love of information because you have found this channel, because you value information, and because you understand that if information puts you ahead of the ball game, you're getting that force to check in every U.S. state tonight. You're not waiting. You have a three-month pre-warning of how bad this economy is going to be. And in three months from now, you know it's going to be a lot worse. You're not waiting. You're getting that force to check in every U.S. state. In the second half of this video, we're going to go over that force to check in every U.S. state. It's there. You're going to grab it. You're going to get it, and you're going to continue to get it. The eligibility is for you. Back in the month of March, viewers said, go find me these checks, and I've had these checks for you since March. By September, it will have been six months. Tonight, it's three months till September. You get these checks tonight. You don't wait for three months to get these checks. You don't wait for three weeks. You don't wait for three days. You don't wait three hours. You go right on this video, right this minute with your finger, and you hit the button that says join the channel. Become a member. Get the newsletter that all Americans are talking about. The newsletter that is predicting where this economy is going, that has the checks in there, that gives you the guidance nightly with the price of gasoline, the price of grain, the price of wheat. You know where this economy is going because you're educated. You are not doing silly things. You're doing correct things ahead of game. Get those four simple checks in the second half of this video with me. We'll go over that in the big second half. Then also, we'll be turning to those raising up of your benefits. If you're on SSI and SSDI, it's great news. The second half, we have great news. You deserve it. You deserve it. As the economy continues to spiral down, you deserve all this incredible great news. It's coming up in the second half. But first, here's a little bit about the community page. As America's most watched show in financial news continues, it's evenings out late in prime time. I'll see you back in 60 seconds with those big checks and the raising up of your benefits as evenings out late continues if you want money right now not five days from now and not five weeks from now then reach out to the community page the volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities that's at news.la.com forward slash community the community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you they can help you find rent utilities snap food benefits mortgage assistance and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA late at 9 a.m. Home LA late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Light. And the excitement continues right now for Evenings LA for June 17th, 2022. Hope you're doing well. I'll be with you all weekend long. And shows, of course, continue throughout the evening. In this big second half, we're going to go over those four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. I'm going to show you how to get them, where they are, and what you need to do to get them. Those incredible four stimulus checks in every U.S. state started in the month of March. So let's understand, they've been around since the month of March. If you just found this channel tonight, welcome. But you need to get moving very quickly. If you've been a member of this channel since the month of March, have you gotten these checks? If you haven't, you need to move quickly as well. I'm going to show you how 
in this video starting right now. Go right in this video and do three things. Subscribe, become a member, and stay with me over the second half right now. We're going to go over these incredible checks, which are in the membership newsletter Monday through Friday. Back in the month of March, my viewers who love information, who love to be informed, who love to be educated, and love to learn, said to me the following. LA, can you find me some checks? <laughs> I love them because they learn from me. I taught them. I taught you that you get money when times are good. You do not wait till your back is against the wall. And back in March, February, January, times were not that bad. They said, but that Bill Better Act is not getting done. Can you get us some checks? And I looked high and low and I found them checks. They understood there's three different ways you can get checks from the president, from the states, or from Congress. And I found these checks from the president and from the states. And I gave them a letter and said, so check A, check B, and check C. They also understand, you also understand, the importance of getting big checks. Big checks. Not small, puny checks. Let's be very frank. One person asked, was in the live chat yesterday saying, uh, I was looking for a $200 check for my state. Why? <laughs> what the $200 is going to do? Pay for the lunch at your local fast food restaurant that's based upon their current price escalation? $200 ain't going to do anything. You need monster checks, tens of thousands of dollars of checks. And finally, I made sure that the checks I give my viewers qualify for as many of my viewers as they can. And they do. Single individual, $75,000 or less, you go get them. Maybe a couple hundred fifty thousand or less annual income, you go get them. If you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, veterans benefits, RB, you go get them. If you're retired, if you're young, if you're old, if you work, if you don't work, if you're ahead on your bills, if you're behind on your bills, you go get them. If you have children without children, go get them. They're in every U.S. state. Let's look at these incredible checks. We're going to look at that first check right now. It is a sixty-five hundred dollar to twelve thousand dollar for stimulus check in every u.s state i give them a lettering system and that first check on this channel is of course obviously called check a check a is a for stimulus check in every u.s state and you heard me right it's sixty five hundred dollars to twelve thousand dollars it's a wonderful check you deserve it how do you get this incredible check what is it and how does it work let's look at the details starting right now it's a sixty five hundred dollars to twelve thousand dollars check in every u.s state single individual seventy five thousand or less you go get it Mary couple hundred fifty thousand or less you go get it. if you if you are on benefits go get it what are you waiting for it is called the homeowners weatherizing grand check and how do you get this incredible check step one subscribe to this channel hit that subscribe button under the video you need to do it right now step two become a member Hit that join button under the video where it says join this channel and become a Purple Hawk, Purple Power, or Calcino VIP. Like all the hundreds of people in the live chat with that beautiful purple emoji behind their name. Step three, get that membership newsletter delivered Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time via the YouTube alert system and go right in there and go down to, yes, check A. It'll have a link to go into the nationwide website. You go right in there, then choose your state, then choose the homeowner's weatherizing grant, and you pounce. $6,500 to $12,000, baby. There we go. But you're not going to stop there yet. You're going to go get check B as well. Fifteen dollars to $80,000 for stimulus check in every U.S. state. Wonderful. It is a monster check. Viewers are tracking about $66,000 to $80,000. It is individuals 75,000 or less married couple 150,000 or less and if you're on benefits go get it it's called the homeowner's grant check how do you get it step one subscribe step two become a member step three go down to that membership newsletter to you find check b click the link and then pounce and go get that incredible check but you're not going to stop there yet you're also going to go get <laughs> you know what's next after b of course check c Check C is wonderful, especially for my renters. It is in every U.S. state, and it's wonderful. It is generally an MSC, $2,000 a month over 12 months, and wow. How do you get this incredible check? It is $24,000 on average, but many viewers have gotten $45,000 actually on average. A lot have gotten over $200,000. It is the residue of third stimulus. Where do you get it? Step one, subscribe. Step two, become a member. Then go down to that membership newsletter to find check c when you find check c you learn in the newsletter who to call 
because you're calling for checks and you're not applying online, what to say and how to say it. You're going to make about 15 phone calls. Check C dates back to December 2020, and it's been the big success story of this channel. Viewers have listened and learned, and here are some success stories. $20,000 to $30,000 for rent. Do you want them? Go get Check C. Utilities. Mark's brother-in-law got $15,000. Do you want $15,000 for utilities paid for you? Go get Check C. Snap. Mark's brother-in-law is getting, getting $25,000 a year because of my recordings for Snap. That's a quarter million dollars over 10 years. Do you want that? Go get Snap. Then combos. Look at these combinations that viewers have gotten from Check C. Nisi at 23000 then. She's in all the live chats on evenings. She gets about another 8000 every few weeks. Mark's as well. Lorraine and also Margaret and Johnny. Well, Nisi has gone from 23000 to nearly 50000 Mark's gone from 32000 Watch Mark. Here we go. To 50000 then to 100,000, then he got check B a few weeks ago. Now he's at $166,000 from watching L Light. Lorraine, she was at 105, now she's at 130,000 from watching L Light. The success stories continue to come on in as Johnny got $50,000 for him, $80,000 from Svels, then reached out and helped his two family members both get 50,000 a pot, then helped about 20 friends and neighbors and got them 300,000 plus, the success stories are brooded and rooted in getting the information and learning from this channel. That's why people become a member. Thousands of members on this channel, hundreds of thousands of subscribers become a member today. Go right in that membership newsletter, go right down to the below the video, join and become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Calcino VIP, get that newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Here's some other things to know. Number one, make sure you subscribe. Go under the video and hit that subscribe button. Number two, there's a little bell. Hit that bell so it's set to all notifications. Then make sure you watch for the alerts from YouTube. There's an alert that says new LLA post at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Make sure you know your time zone. So if you're not Pacific Standard Time, if you're East Coast, you're 10. If you're Midwest, you're 9 Central. And the post will say new LA newsletter. And then lower in the post will say click in here and go in the alert and go say click here and go to the post. You go in the post and you go get those incredible checks. Check A, B, and C. And with that, you will rock and roll. You deserve this incredible money and and you need to get this incredible money. Go get it as quickly as possible. Now, let me tell you what's important to understand is that you got a, you got a pre-warning. You got a pre-warning. This economy is going to blow by September, three months out. You're not going to wait three months to get these checks. You're not going to wait three weeks. You're not going to wait three days. You're going to get these checks right now. In the next three months, this economy is going to look dramatically worse than it is. And then what's going to happen? This is going to be a stimulus stampede. There's going to be a stimulus stampede. People are going to lose their jobs, and they're going to come looking to this channel to get checks, and perhaps naming checks from 2020 stimulus packages that don't exist anymore. PUA, FPUC, UA. That's silliness, as Elleron says. These are people who think that those stimulus packages still exist. Also silliness. People who believe that the way you got a stimulus check in 2020 is the way you're going to get in 2022. Silliness. Different year. Different economy. It's a different situation. Did we have a recession in 2020? No. We never had a recession in 2020. So do you do things the same way you do in 2020? No. You got to move and hustle and get the money. The situation in, December, in September will be you, the Pearl Power community, and others who are not. Others who are not, who do not know where this economy is, do not know where it's going, do not have any concern about learning about where it's going, are really going to get hit badly. I fear for them. I really do fear for them. Some people really want information. I love them that they do, but some people don't. And people who don't want information that just sort of want to read a news headline, you know, five months after the storm has already hit. Oh, a hurricane already hit. <laughs> Did you want to know that the hurricane was down the road? No, I just waited till just the hurricane hit. I worry about those people because they will be in a very, very bad situation, but they are not you.
Let's go back to the president's comments that led this video tonight, which was talking about the recession. Is recession inevitable? And why is gasoline the root of the problem? I'm going to go over that details right now, and then I'm going to go over those big additional raises of your benefits checks in right after that as well. That's great news. The president believes the recession is not inevitable. Is that true or correct? It is not correct. If you're in the live chat, you know the answer. What's the answer? Gas prices. The president's only way to prevent a recession is getting gasoline prices down. The only way doing that is getting 3.5 million barrels of gasoline per day for him and the Western allies. Here's the equation. Gasoline is causing a domino effect that's sending this economy and all the other economies in recession. It starts with the following analysis. One, there are 3.5 million barrels of gasoline missing per day. Why? Because we embargoed them from Russia and OPEC plus reduced production. With 3.5 million barrels of gasoline missing per day, we have a shortage of gasoline. And with a shortage of gasoline, prices go up for gasoline. If prices of gasoline goes up, then what happens? The consumer price index number released last Friday, the CPI, goes up. And the CPI is a gauge of inflation. And if that goes up, we perceive inflation is going up. Then what happens? If inflation is going up with the CPI, then Che Powell raises interest rates. That's exactly what he said he did yesterday. This week, Jay Powell said, I'm raising interest rates because the CPI was higher, because inflation has not peaked, because inflation is going higher. If Jay Powell raises interest rates, we go into recession. Raising interest rates will not solve raising gasoline prices. What it will do is send you in a recession, and then a recession is inevitable. Now, Let's go to some good news. We deserve it. We really deserve it. In addition to those four symbols checks in every U.S. state, there's other good news tonight. And that other good news, delivered breaking news on this channel two nights earlier, is that your benefits are definitely going up. Congratulations. How much? At least $300 a month, lifetime. But I'm going to show you the analysis of why I think it may be $350, maybe even more, maybe closer to $400. Let's go over this situation starting right now. It is great. It's a little bit complicated. And because it's a little bit complicated to explain in the video, it's also now in the membership newsletter. What's at issue? Yes, your checks are going up. If you're on SSI, SSDI, VA, RB, or any of the multiple benefits as well, they will be going up at least 8%, but they may be going up more than that. How does this work? What's going on? Let's go over the analysis starting right now. And if I lose you, don't worry, because it's all in the membership newsletter. Brand new edition. That's why people want to be members. I got it all in the membership newsletter. You're not going to see this anywhere else in the landscape of financial broadcasting today. What's going on? On Friday, last Friday, not today, but last Friday, the CPI was released. It came in at 8.5%. 8.5% was higher than 8.3%. And when that number was released, that CPI, the chief actuary, that's his name, his position, Stephen Goss at Social Security said that based upon that CPI, I believe that your COLA this year will be around, that's a quote, around 8%. That's huge. And that means that if he's correct, which he generally is, uh, at minimum, or, or at least at that, at that level or higher, then your benefits will go up 8% starting January 1, not just one month, not just one year, but lifetime. It's absolutely incredible. That is $300 more per month. It is SS300. It is happening, baby. But wait a second. The news gets better. Where does the news get better? When looking at the same data that Goss is looking at, two, or two different groups, one, the Seniors League of America, and two, myself, both believe that data will actually be higher. They believe it's going to be 8.6% your benefits are going to go up. I believe the data will be 9%, that your benefits will go up 9%. 8.6 will be about 350 a month. 9% may be upwards of 375, maybe a little more per month. Let's go to the analysis starting right now. COLA is dependent upon a, is determined by a, another number. COLA is determined by a number called the CPI-W. What is CPI-W? That sounds like CPI. It is. It's a subsection of CPI. As CPI goes up, so does CPI-W. COLA is determined upon the CP is determined by the CPI-W for three months per year. Which three months? July, August, and September. If the CPI this last week was 8.5%, what will be the CPI for 
July, August, and September. Let's do the analysis. Remember, it's dependent upon gasoline. Is gasoline going down this month? It is not. It's gone up. So clearly, the month of July, CPI is going to be higher. That's pretty easy, I like. What about August, September? Well, if Joe Biden does not get a solution for gasoline and gasoline goes to a predicted $10 a gallon, which I'm predicting, then, or goes higher, just it doesn't even have to go to 10 it has to go to go higher, then the CPI will be as high in August and September. And if what Jay Powell is doing by raising the interest rate is not going to reduce the price of gasoline, obviously it's not, then the CPI stays as hot as it is right now. Then the CPI in July, August, and September that determines, or CPI-W, that determines the COLA may be higher than the CPI that Goss is predicting. I believe then it's 8.9%. There you go. And that would absolutely be wonderful news across the board. Now, we have a second part of this news story as well. And that is that we have two bodies of legislation, one from Liz Warren and Chuck Schumer, uh, Liz Warren and Bernie Sanders, and the other one from another legislator that are both introducing bills that would swap COLA for basically inflation at CPIE. Yes, that's what we talk about a lot on this channel. So those bodies of legislation would likely need a recon. I don't know if they're going to happen but those are great news. They're basically keeping the messaging on point. I love it because at this point, you're looking at getting $300 more per month. It's a reality. Congratulations. That's just not one month. It's lifetime. It's on top of your 5.9% raise last year. And if the bill happens as well, then you can get an additional raise on top of that. But it's all looking really, really good. What do we know going into the weekend? And what do we know going into the new week? What we know going into the weekend is that this economy is stalling up. It's stalling up dramatically. We understand that consumer confidence has fallen dramatically. We understand that people do not understand what a recession is. That the average consumer, not you, the average American do not know what a recession is. And that the president, by being asked a question about recession now, when we're clearly not in a recession, suggests that even the news media don't even know what a recession is. The problem I'm worried about is that people who hear the question of recession get spooked and a lot of things come from it negatively. What are the issues that come from a re the talk of a recession negatively right now? One, consumer spending stops. Two, consumer confidence stops. Three, conf consumer confusion starts growing. The consumer confusion starts when people believe this is as bad as it's going to get. It's not. It's phase one, as I explained earlier in this recording. They believe that if they have a job now, they'll still have the job. Nope, because we're heading into phase two. That's in September. We have a long downward spiral. They believe that the stock market has fallen. That's as low as it's going to fall. No, the stock market is going to fall a lot lower. We're only in a bear market for the stock market. We're not in a bear and recessionary market for yet for the stock market. Auto is going to get worse. Housing is going to get worse. The storm out to sea is going to touch on land. And gas prices, in my prediction, are going to go higher. There are five ways to get gasoline lower, and none of them are being done. And let me tell you the situation tonight for the Western Allies and the White House. Is a recession inevitable? It is inevitable if you don't get gasoline. 3.5 million of barrels of gasoline are missing per day. For us and the Western Allies, five possibilities exist. None of those possibilities exist in U.S. territory. We do not have 3.5 million barrels of gasoline on the ground. And by talking all the time in the Oval Office about how horrible the oil executives are in America, they may be horrible, but they still do not have 3.5 million barrels of gasoline in the ground. They don't have it. So they're not the focal point of what the White House should be doing. What the White House should be doing is a three-step approach. Number one, firing Brian D.C. and the entire Economic Council. Number two, bringing in a team that will negotiate with the Western allies to choose a country, one of five, to get the oil from. So that all the Western allies agree, this is the country we're getting the gasoline from. Then getting the gasoline from one of those five countries. And what are the five options? Venezuela, Brazil, Iran, OPEC Plus, and Saudi Arabia. The Western allies need to choose a country, choose it as a team, 
and get the gasoline from those countries. Venezuela, we've isolated last week by not inviting them to a conference in Los Angeles. We did the same with them in Brazil. Iran is still a possibility. We haven't burned our bridges with them. We were at the negotiating table just a few months ago. Then we fell apart. And OPEC Plus has had some countries we've been allies with and Saudi Arabia as well. We need to do the deal. The Western allies need to do the deal. We all need to do the deal. It's 3.5 million barrels for all the countries because all the countries need the oil. You fix the oil in one country, you don't fix the problem. You need to fix the situation for all the countries. And here is where the situation is so obvious. All these Western allies have known this problem since day one of the invasion of Ukraine. They all knew the problem in October of last year. I made the recording in October of last year. I said Putin at, at, has 100,000 Russian troops at the Ukrainian border. What are they doing there? If they invade, we need oil lined up to replace it. What do the Western allies do? They banned the Russian oil and they didn't get a replacement out. This is a failure of leadership. A failure of leadership in Germany, France, United States, uh, Sweden, all these countries, a massive failure of leadership. They understand they need oil for their citizens. They understand they need oil. And did they get the oil? They did not. What's happening in Italy? People are parking their cars. They can't afford the gasoline. What's going to happen in England? They're going to start doing the same thing. What's going to happen in the United States? Are you going to drive a car if the gasoline is $10 a gallon? You're not. You're just not. And will go to $10 a gallon? Well, the consensus among Wall Street is that the international price of Brent crude will go to $185. It's $119 tonight. $185 is not $5 a gallon at the pump, folks. It's clearly about $7. Is $10 possible? I believe it is. Because all you need is one other major problem with anything internationally that'll disrupt something. And then the next stop after 7 is 10 I know tonight the national, the U.S. domestic uh, unleaded average of AAA is $5. But folks, can't keep on sustaining that. Can't keep on sustaining that. We jump from 4 to 5 in just a blink of an eye. We will jump from 5 to 7 because we have nothing lined up. And we have not even entered into the winter months. We haven't ever even entered into 4th of July, where you know prices go up. We haven't even entered into the, the travel season of August. Got to get the situation solved. If you don't, a recession is inevitable. President Joe Biden is incorrect. The Western Isles need to get that gasoline lined up. They need to do an alliance and get an agreement on who they're going to get the gasoline from. Five countries to shoot from. Do it right tonight. Do it right today. But what do you need to do? You need to do one thing and one thing only. Subscribe. Become a member. Actually, a couple things. <laughs> you need to subscribe. Become a member. Get that four stimulus check in every U.S. state. Get that information, that knowledge that comes from watching LA Light, that gives you the guidance on where this economy is going before we're there. Getting checks will give you that financial independence, that financial security, that financial freedom before the fall of this economy happens in September. September is just a few weeks away. You don't want to wait for September. You want to get those checks tonight. And you want to stay with this channel. That gives you the financial news of where we are, where we're heading, and where those checks are. It's LA Light. Stay with me throughout the night as LA continues with its broadcasting coverage of this economy. <laughs>